two years ago, I was working as an editor at a magazine in Vancouver. And like a lot of people, I had uh, two monitors in front of me. I had a dozen windows open. And I was just living in this uh, really a state of like constant digital distraction. And uh, there was a text message that came through. My friend Tyler texted me and said, are you alive or what? And he was sending that because it had been five minutes since I uh, responded to his last message and he was upset that it took me that long. But in the moment of being so harried in my, uh, in my workload, uh, I looked down at the phone and I read it literally, are you alive? And I remember in that moment kind of looking up at these glowing rectangles that I spend most of my life staring at and thinking this isn't really the life that I, that I planned for myself when I was a child. And uh, yeah, that really was this impetus moment to try and figure out what was it that had changed since the 1980s? Uh, what was it that, uh, that went so drastically uh, off that highway that I thought I was on? The book is more description than it is prescription, I would say. Uh, I think the first step for all of us has got to be uh, learning a little bit of the history of technology and figuring out how we got here. That was really uh, what pushed me to write the book, was to try and put our lives in a much broader historical context. Uh, and yeah, I, th I think if there's any prescription, it would be that we need to get media studies and the history of technology into our high schools and even elementary schools. So the most difficult thing about writing the book was definitely the research. Uh, there were just dozens and dozens of interviews with people from all different specialties all around the world. And in each case, I was going in as really an idiot. I didn't know anything. Uh, and they were you know, the best attention deficit disorder specialist in the world. And so it was on every uh, interview, it was a massive amount of homework that I had to complete. Um, and then it would be on to the next stage or the next chapter, and I was an idiot again. So uh, it really felt like a crash course in a lot of different disciplines. I think what surprised me was just how uh, consistent that thesis uh, of that, that idea of the end of absence, uh, how broadly it, uh, it played out in our lives, every part of our lives from attention span to sex lives to memory to the way we raise our children. Uh, absence was this thing that we were missing uh, in this constantly connected world that we've got. While I, was, uh, while I was interviewing all these different specialists, even though they all had very different ways of talking about it, there was a through line that they were all talking in the end about the end of absence, that they were all talking about uh, the ways that becoming a constantly connected culture uh, really destroyed something fundamental in what it is to be human, which is that experience of being without something. Uh, the experience of solitude, or of daydreaming, or of just lacking the thing that you immediately want.